guys, today we got Zeke a dozen dino eggs as a toy. And um, they're kind of like Hatchimals, except they have dinosaurs inside them. Oh. 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 I want to hatch, I want to hatch it this one. A pterodactyl? Yeah, I want to okay. hatch it I have a dino egg. Oh, I love they explain and they teach you about each different kind of dinosaur in German. And then what do we have here? Uh, I think little cards. Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, these are how you Yay. hatch your eggs. And if you speak English, you get the little cards and instructions. Okay. It's made by this company called Dan and Darcy, which is really cute. Oh, what are those? Huh? Little paintbrushes. Here's the instructions, which are super cute. I love the way they make them. So do you want to read the instructions? Yes. Number one. First, soften your egg by placing it in a cup of water. In about five minutes, when it sinks, you're ready. Out in the wild and we're finding these eggs, and then we're going to identify them. Because we're what? Paleontologists. Paleontologists. A dinosaur expert. Oh my god. They're already cracking. What is it? A post to be cracking? Freezing, right? How about. Another one for this one. Okay, can we start cracking open some eggs? Okay. I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to choose this one. I think I got one of the green dinosaurs. There's nobody inside. Oh, wait, what's that? What's that right there? Oh, oh. That was his tail that I saw before. It's a Tyrannosaurus. One of the largest and most fearsome dinosaurs. He had a mouthful of 60 teeth, each one almost eight inches long. Its massive jaws gave it a bite three times stronger than a lion. And scientists believe it could eat 500 pounds of meat in one bite. That's more than you could eat in a year. As you can imagine, the Tyrannosaurus was a vicious hunter and feasted on smaller animals. Many fossils show marks of its teeth on bones that have been completely bitten through. It probably had an excellent sense of smell, as skull fossils show a large area for that part of the brain. Once it smelled something to eat, live or dead, it would have no problem scaring away any other scavengers who would try to share. I'm, I'm revealing something! Oh, oh, oh. I got a head! Look at that. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Ornithomimus, whose name means like a bird, was a tiny dinosaur compared to most of the other ones that we know about. It was only about 12 feet long with long thin legs and a long thin neck. While it did not have wings and couldn't fly, there is evidence that suggests that it may have been covered with feathers. It had hollow bones, which meant it was pretty light and was able to run at high speeds, possibly reaching over 40 miles per hour. Well, look, it's almost out. <laughs> yes, I got the one I guessed. <gasps> Let's see, what is it? It's a Diplodocus. Diplodocus was a four-legged dinosaur, which had an extremely long neck and tail. It was about 80 to 100 feet long, was as tall as a three-story building, and weighed around 20 tons. It is one of the most easily identifiable dinosaurs, with its classic dinosaur shape, long neck and tail, and four sturdy legs. It was a plant eater, and probably spent a good part of their time in the water, where they fed upon water plants and escaped their natural enemies, the meat-eating dinosaurs. Welcome to the Dinosaur Spa. It's a Styracosaurus. This plant eater's name means Spike Lizard. One of the most unique looking dinosaurs, it was the size of a tank and looked kind of like a horned rhinoceros with a giant flat triangular head with six spikes sticking out the back. They lived in what is today North America and traveled in herds which gave them added protection as they could fight larger enemies as a group. Fossils show us that they probably laid eggs in nests and stayed close to them like birds until they hatched. Making a line bisect the egg. Ooh, look at that fossil. Man, that's so cool. So we got the Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus was one of the big dinosaurs. It lived in the area of North America in the late Cretaceous period, although similar specimens were also found in Asia. It was an herbivore, which means it lived on plants. It was able to run on two legs when it needed to move quickly or reach high up, but it also moved around on four legs, mainly when it was foraging for its food. 
The most interesting feature of the Parasaurolophus was that big crest on top of its head. There have been many ideas about what it was there for, but the most realistic ones are that it was for making trumpeting sounds to communicate with other dinosaurs, and possibly also for helping it cool itself off if it got too hot. I got him out. I broke him apart. So who did you get? It's a pterodactyl. The pterodactyl is a type of pterosaur. The pterosaur was the earliest known flying reptile. Its name means winged lizard. Believe it or not, it wasn't actually a dinosaur, although they lived in the same period. There were lots of types of pterosaurs. Some were as small as a toy plane, but others were as big as a fighter jet. Their wings were webs of skin that stretched out from their arms, similar to bat wings. Six, six. Ooh, look at that beast. Also, look at that there. It's the Anglosaurus. This short, wide dinosaur's body was covered with bony plates like a suit of armor and lived in the western part of North America. That's where I'm from. Even though it was probably only six or seven feet high, it was almost as wide as it was tall, and it could be up to 33 feet long. Ankylosaurus was a plant eater, and its short legs, wide mouth, and low head made it very good at grazing on the ground. It had a long tail with a big bony club at the end, which was probably used to defend itself against larger dinosaurs. Look, I broke it open. What's inside? It's the Corythosaurus. This large, duck-billed, plant-eating dinosaur had a bony crest on its head that was shaped like a Corinthian helmet. You know, like ancient Greek soldiers used to wear? Which is how it got its name. Inside the crest, there was a bunch of tubes running from the nose to the back of the throat. These tubes might have been used to make sounds like a foghorn. It walked on two legs and used a long, flat tail for balance. And it lived, guess where, guess where, guess where? North America. And is one of the most well-known types of dinosaurs mainly because so many have been found and are displayed in museums. Very common, Corythosaurus, very common. <laughs> Ooh, and there's somebody yellow in there. Let's see what happens. Oh, he has some dirt on him. Let's get the dirt off. We got an Iguanodon. The Iguanodon was a large plant-eating dinosaur that lived in Western Europe. Early scientists thought that it walked upright on its hind legs, but later research suggests that it, in fact, moved on all fours, with its long, stiff tail extended behind it. One of the most distinctive features of the Iguanodon is its spiky thumb, which was probably used to defend itself from predators, but could also have been used to break open fruits and seeds. I don't know about you, but if I have to defend myself against a predator, I'm not going to rely upon my thumb. I think you can just pull him out. Pull him by his tail. Oh. Woo Look, it's a stegosaurus. This curious creature had large, bony, pointy plates sticking right up into the air along the length of its back, which may look to you like they are helpful as protection, but fossils show us that the plates were attached to the skin, not the skeleton, so they would sort of bend if pushed. They were probably a cooling system. Extra space on the skin surface allowing heat to leave the body more quickly. But this bus-sized, slow-moving plant eater wasn't without defenses. It could swing a spiked tail at anything getting too close. It would have some trouble planning its day, though, as it had a brain the size of a plum. Here we go. Just rinse this one off. It's a Dilophosaurus. We don't know a lot about Dilophosaurus, but we can tell that it was a medium-sized carnivorous, which means meat-eating, dinosaur with a double crest like half dinner plates on its head. It had short, small arms with three fingers, but strong legs with four large toes on each, all with claws, and it lived in North America. Wow. Okay, I finally cracked it open. Look, it's a Dinonychus. This long-tailed dinosaur was much smaller than most, growing to about 10 feet in length and weighing under 200 pounds. Its name means Terrible Claw because of the powerful sickle-shaped claws at the end of its long forelimbs. Dinonychus was a meat-eater. Even more interestingly, it had long, strong legs like a kangaroo, and it appears from the way its bones are shaped that it could balance on one foot and kick hard with the other. Ah, what? I hope you liked learning about dinosaurs. See you next time. Subscribe.